All right. So, here we are, man. Level 10 booty action. Let's do it. So we've got the lich dust. We've got all the ritual prepared. We're going to go tell Lysandus to calm down. All right. This is a really cool dungeon, just aesthetically, by the way. I like the floor. It's actually... Oh, excuse me. It's actually unique. And I think these... I don't know what these are supposed to be. I think they're supposed to be orcs. I don't know why they're naked, but... It makes sense, because the orcs actually did respect him. I mean, I think these are supposed to be orcs. I hope they are. It don't matter. So what we're looking for in here is we need... I'm just going to see if I can blitz through this shit. Hopefully I can. Alright, so we need to find a skull teleporter. Yeah, how would you know that, by the way? You just don't. You just play the game and then you, uh... You go crazy, right? Or you look it up on the internet because you're a smart person and value your fucking sanity and free time. Um, well, that's not even the last instance of this shit in the game, by the way. Um, so, yeah, Lysandus was buried here even though he didn't... You know, we all know at this point, so if you don't know in the story at this point, Lysandus died by being assassinated by Wayrest somebody in Wayrest, and framed the orcs instead after he died. So, technically he didn't die there. And he was instead, like, on the battlefield they had that was a body double, so... You follow me here, camera guy? Fuck this door, I'm done with it. <laughs> There's not much I really need at this point in the game, except maybe Daedric gear. Um, but yeah... I have a fun story to tell when we get to Lysandus' actual resting place, and I, I will be so happy to tell you it when we get there, I promise. This dungeon really isn't too crazy, other than that aforementioned skull teleporter. It's not the worst dungeon possible. It's fairly okay. I mean, this could be a lot worse. This could be like the fucking unicorn horn nonsense. But, um... Yeah. S essentially, Lysandus is buried here and not the monument that's in the battlefield where the body double died. And so, of course, after you finish this quest line, it initiates a slight deviation in the branching where we can determine what happens and how Lysandus' revenge will be extracted. Where the fuck did this thing come from? I think it came out of a secret. Uh, okay, then. Well, let's see if there's anything over there. Well, what do you know? Seth's a thinker. He's a doer. He's a smart guy. Thinking he knows his shit, I bet. But, um, so yeah, Lysandus is in this tomb somewhere, technically, and we're going to exercise his spirit. In Elder Scrolls lore, this is about as, like, final as it can kind of get for a character, I guess. So, all you really need to know at this point in the story is... If you ever actually have been to the city of Daggerfall at night, I've only described this. Um, if you go there at night, wraiths, ghosts, and I think that's it, they spawn and then Lysandus will scream vengeance over and over. Um, so if you try to do this before that, um, it's not really a good idea. <laughs> Um, but this is the first step in stopping that, so if you want to make Daggerfall your personal playground at night, uh, this will help keep things a little bit more quiet. This is step one of two. Um, so as far as story goes, we're very close to the end. Um, however, there's one thing that you're probably wondering, and you can kind of infer it at this point. Who was it that killed Lysandus then? If he didn't die on the battlefield, then it's probably somebody in Wayrest that we probably assume is evil and shitty. Who exactly did it? That's the that's the million dollar question, right? Was it was it a royal? Was it just a disgruntled dude? Was it who was it? We'll find out. Um, plot twist. I already know. Uh, <laughs> and plot twist. It can. Uh, 
Well, I've already said it like 70 times, but we'll pretend I haven't said it 78 times, right? So, yeah, there's there's definitely some mystery if this is your first time playing the game, I guess. But for me, this is the... Well, actually, this will be my fourth time finishing Daggerfall from start to finish um, in ever. And my second time in Unity, too. Um... And I've said it numerous times this playthrough, but if you're crazy and just now tuning in... No, I've started Daggerfall at least, like, 30 or 40 times, and every time the game just dies because something fucking broke or... Not Quest. I mean the game broke. Like, save file gets corrupted inexcusably, like, right near the end of the game. I have a fun story that involves this quest, too, so I, uh, I hope you guys are ready for when that happens. But, um, yeah, no joke, dude. This is, like, it's one of those games that I've nearly finished about a thousand times, and by the time the game fucking crashes on you for the 8,000th time and then eats your save with it, you don't want to keep playing after that happens, obviously. You get kind of, uh, I think the word the kids use these days is fucking flustered just a little bit, or flabbergasted is the other word I'd use. Um, so you don't really want to keep playing it after that, so... <laughs> yeah, but all things considered, this is a fairly easy dungeon. There's not really a whole lot of shit we gotta worry about. There is... from memory, I think there's a vampire in here, but that's kind of your way of telling you're going the right direction, basically. It's not... It's not really like, a very dangerous dungeon, all things considered. However, if you're stupid like I was when I first played this game, you're gonna be in a really shitty position, which we'll get into later, because I was... like... This feels correct. Hey, we've seen this module before, haven't we? Hmm, this seems familiar in the s most peculiar of ways. But, um, yeah. So yeah, technically I have gotten to the end of the game. Like, this is the furthest I'd get, usually, before the game would eat my save. And I'd just say, fuck this game. I'm done with it at that point. I think that's a reasonable thing for most people to do, because it's like a 20-hour-plus epic and grind to get, like, all the way to the end again. And that's just not worth it for a lot of players. Um... But, you know, that's the thing. I, I love Daggerfall. It's a personal favorite game of mine. I have a lot of nostalgia for this game. I don't really have... Well, I have some criticisms of it, obviously, but I don't think that my criticisms are going to be the same as somebody who's... looking at it from an outsider angle. Obviously, to me, this is a very... Very buggy, very awkward, very obtuse, very unfriendly game to the new player. But for someone like me who's played this game literally for over 10 years plus, these things to me are normal. This is why I always say I don't mind the combat in Morrowind and stuff because, hell, I played this before I played Morrowind, so it was a lot easier for me to adapt to um, when I first played Morrowind and went, the fuck is this bullshit? Because, like a lot of people, my first introduction to ES was, um, actually Oblivion, so... I was used to the idea that, oh, wow, why am I swinging and not hitting the shit? That's really stupid. But then I had to think of it because... I guess I was lucky, but... I also realized as a youngin', I was like, oh, well, pff, shit probably uses something like D&D &D logic, right? Where it's all based on, like, dice rolls, and... That's kind of accurate to describe Morrowind and this game's combat. Like, it's still very heavily inspired by TRPGs, um, or TTRPGs, but TTRPG sounds like titty RPGs, and... Well, that's an entirely different kind of game. Or is it? Well, there's quite a bit of TTs in this game, too. See? But, um, still, I... I don't think that, you know, this combat would hold up today as much as it would in other kinds of circles, but this is the magic of 
the internet and the magic of other people liking other things, I think there is still room for these kinds of games to exist. There's still people that play like fucking Neverwinter Nights for God's sake, which is allegedly not one of the best games. And I think I always wax lyrical about him, but my boy Noah Gervais, uh, go look up his videos. They're fantastic. Uh, he puts me to shame. Um, like, those games aren't very good. And even as someone who doesn't, like, know the source material and has no experience with TTRPG mechanics and stuff, except, you know, things like this and, like, Fallout 1 and 2, I can totally get down with it and be like, oh yeah, that makes total sense. Like... How does armor rating work? It's based on this, based on this, based on this, to go through this, and then you do this, and then it factors this. Okay. And then you die in one hit, and you go, well, that's just bullshit. I had no way of predicting that. And then the dungeon master will say, oh, well, we'll try again. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, games like this, they didn't give a shit. Like, the chance of me opening that door the first time is pretty slim. Even though I've literally used lockpick a bajillion times... Doesn't mean it's going to work every single time, right? So, that's something that, like, confuses a lot of new players to both... I'd say Morrowind and Daggerfall, because technically Morrowind is the sequel to Daggerfall. It was actually an improvement and uses a lot of the same functionality in this game that that game uses. So, if you've played one game, you can understand it in the natural progression of things, right? Um, a good example is if you've played Oblivion, you can easily adapt to Skyrim, right? If you've played Diablo 2, you can easily adapt to a game like Torchwood, right? So, you see what I mean? Like, games of a similar type, you know, I guess the uh, expression I'm looking for here is birds of a feather, but, you know, that's my, that's my point. Like... If you are familiar with a type of game, it's a lot easier for you to adapt to. Things like fighting games, to me, they're not as interesting, but I am more familiar with fighting games that feel more like a Mortal Kombat clone. So, like, a thing like Street Fighter, to me, is weird because it doesn't have chip damage. Like, it's the small little minutia that separates my interest in, like, the mechanics and stuff. I've also explained in the past I didn't like, um... I also don't like Street Fighter because I don't like the art style. But then again, I also don't like MK11, and that's where the series dies in my eyes. I think that that game has so many problems. Both in the fact that it's just ugly, and I think in a fighting game the last thing you want to do is be ugly, because it's a game solely entirely based on, you know, color palette, character designs, you know, and just... In general, it's a great way to show animation tech off. It's all these really cool things. But MK11 just fuck ugly. I think it's an awful looking game. It's just gray and muddy. And MKX started to divulge into that too. I think MKX has some fuck ugly looking arenas. The Nether... Not Nether Realm, Jesus. The Outworld arena in that game is just awful. Like, that, you can't tell me that's Outworld. First of all, don't also try and say, Oh, well, fucking obviously, just Kung Jin says it. Don't believe everything you see on the internet. No, dude. It's called fucking... Literally since the A... What, late 80s? The or Sorry, the late 90s and onwards. Actually, even since MK2, fucking Outworld is purple. It's marred with that color. Its identity is that color. That is how you know where you're fucking at in the story, right? Um, even the films, God bless them for trying, you know, they address that theory that it's purple, it's different, it's weird, it's it's foreign land. Like, and then Outworld in MKX and beyond is just ugly. <laughs> I will say they're more faithful to the source material comic where they were based solely on the idea that Outworld was a hostile landscape full of... It was basically Mad Max, in a, in a way. You know, that's... that's fair. Um, but, like... 
there was definitely more creative liberty. Like, I like how it's still based on Asian architecture. It's still very cool looking. I think one of the most understated arenas in that entire series, in MK2 at least, is... Um, I think it's just called The Wasteland. It's the one where there's like dilapidated statues, it's purple background, you see some of the architecture. It's just little stuff like that. And I think, personally, that is... I mean, it kind of damns the series to have that standard after that point, but it's true. Um, it really does symbolize what Outworld will look like, essentially, for the next game, and the next game, and the next game. You know, MK9, even though its story was absolutely fucking ridiculous, also add a year, by the way. Um, you know, its story was absolutely fucking stupid. Let's not even try to, like, mince words here. That shit was dumb. There was a lot of stuff in that that was just stupid. Like, the moment when Sindel just walks in and kills, like, eight main characters in, like, a fucking fraction of a second with her shoe? <laughs> okay, she doesn't kill, like, everybody with her shoe. She kills Nightwolf with her shoe, I think. It doesn't matter, you know what I mean? It's... Hey, now. It just feels contrived, I guess, to just... And oh, how is she able to do it? Well, Shao Kahn just basically gave her Shang Tsung's essence, I guess, and that somehow gave her the ability to do that. <laughs> I don't know why she couldn't do that before, but she can't for reasons, right? I don't know. Also, I can't fucking stand the complete and utter fucking devastatingly poorly handled established lore with the simplicit idea that, oh, well, uh, it's a different timeline. That is where a series dies. I'm sorry. mk 9 story died after the timeline got introduced into it. And that should have been... Honestly, I think MK7 like seven should have ended the series. I think, I think Armageddon was a natural conclusion. And here's the other problem I have, and I agree with the fourth snake on this one. Um, those of you who don't know who he is, go look up his videos. He's fantastic. Um, one thing I do hate is this idea that um, the 3D era, quote-unquote, like Deadly Alliance and stuff, just doesn't exist. Yeah, that's an insult, in my opinion. By the way, we're going the right way when we find that coffin. That's how you know you're going the right way. Um... Like, that's just a flat-out insult in my eyes. Like, you know how much cooler... Okay, if, if you're gonna try and reboot a franchise, here's what you do. Don't use old story beats. That is my best advice for anybody who thinks, I want to make a reboot, I'm gonna be a head writer. You know what it is? Take all those preconceived notions and things and throw them away. Because, guess what? Everyone's just gonna compare your work to the original. Everyone who's already there knows what it is. It's like you're not reinventing the wheel. So just scrap all the ideas. If you're going to make a quote-unquote new timeline, just get rid of the old one. Why even bother referencing it? You see what I mean? Like, that's something that I wish more modern writers would do because that's all everyone's going to do. They're going to just say, oh, it's just like this. Or quit complaining that if you're going to make an interpretive version of something, like let's say a book, do not be shocked that people are going to say that's not what it was like in this. Because they'll do that. That's what people do. Um, I hate to tell you the sad, sad reality of when you open yourself up to that reality, people will do that. They will always, and I mean this, they will always do that. Like, you cannot stop it. And then you have to realize this is what happens when you try to, like, say, oh, I'm going to reboot it by doing X, Y, and Z. So, just don't. By the way, if you don't hit that switch, this area doesn't open up. Um, so, that's my point. It's like, if you're going to reboot something, start from complete ground up. Do not try to incorporate little Easter eggs, all that stuff. Just entirely new. If you're going to do something, do it right. Also, this is the only time in the game 
this kind of shit ever gets used. It's really depressing. Oh shit! It's Lysandus! No, I'm just kidding. It's just a regular skeleton. Um, but here we go, man. This is what we've been trying to do the whole game. And you're gonna get ready for my awesome story, I bet. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's hope that doesn't fuck the audio up. Because this is a very temperamental game. <laughs> Even with all this going on, so... Uh, did I... Oh yeah, I set an anchor, I hope. God damn, look at that skeleton. So yeah, if you couldn't hear that, I'm not sure how loud it came through either. He basically said, I don't want to be placated, I want vengeance. Unleash it on Lord Woodburn, sorry, Lordborn of Wayrest. That is the culprit who killed Lysandus. So when I first got here, ever, I didn't have Mark and Recall because I was stupid and a teenager. <clears throat> I played this whole game start to front without magic. You can't jump out of here. You can't even climb to get out of here. So how do you get out? You do that. You click on this. This statue right here will open the elevator back up. I didn't know that, and I also didn't have internet where I was living at the time either, so that was a fun uh, revelation. So yeah, Lord Woodborne. And we leveled up! Level 11 booty action! Okay, level 90 into agility, and we'll get, uh... Well, we're not gonna level up that much more, probably. Let's go with... More int, just for spells. Just for shits and gigs. Um, uh, main save. I always save after these things, because it's such a... It's an easy thing to fuck up. So, yeah. That takes care of... Oh, that's a weird lighting error. But, uh, yeah, that takes care of Lysandus' spirit. But we still have one more thing to do. Well, not just cycle our weapons, but... We have one more thing to do. And that is... Avenge him! Just like in the Hamlets. Uh, 3,400 gold should be enough. All right, so where do we go to do that? Well, if Lord Woodborne of Wayrest wasn't clear enough, uh, I'm willing to bet you a lot of money. And now hear me out here, this may sound crazy. Uh, let's go to Wayrest and see if a new dungeon has unlocked. <gasps> Terrible. Uh, what is it called? I think it's called Woodborne Manor. Wood Woodborne Hall, there we go. So, we can go to Woodborne Hall. Now. Oh, look at that horse. You know what? I'm gonna do it. We'll, we'll just, we'll kill Lord Woodborne in, like, record time. Alright, you guys ready for this? Because I hope you are. We're gonna have a... Double Decker Taco video. I'm sorry I said that too. Alright, anchor that shit and I'll show you how to kill Lord Woodborne. He's real easy. So, this dungeon is pretty easy and I've talked this dungeon up at length. Now, for a non-magic user, I don't know. I don't know what you do. As far as I'm concerned, you have to like hit some things to make these things I don't know how it works so you know what we'll just do the smart thing and hit levitate and go up here but hey look it's a sexy battle mage who's very dead <laughs> ow I think 
Now, this is a pretty easy quest, all things considered. In the main quest of Daggerfall, this is the most reasonable one. Was that the mage I killed? Where did she fall? Oh, there she is. Um, so this one is interesting. You can solve this in a few different ways, and they all have different effects. Not very huge, but their effects nonetheless. Now, so Lord Woodborne is of... Ooh, Eddie's... Oh, shit, son. Look at that. We're fucking... Oh, man. Yeah, look at that. Yeah! Okay, so we got some Addy equipment. That is badass. Wow. I'm gonna rest just to dispel. But, um... That's so cool, dude. Um... So, there's two things you can do in this quest, and I believe the locations are always static in this dungeon. Which is nice, because you can just kind of pick and choose. So, or you can do both, I'm pretty sure. There's a packet of letters that basically expose Lord Woodborne. Who, by the way, at this point in the story, is just the bad guy. He has no actual story or any bearing on anything, right? Fucking hell. this thing open anytime this Sunday? Dice rolls are great, Seth says. Dice rolls are fine, Seth says. Dice rolls aren't a big deal. <laughs> Seth says disingenuously. Um, so there's two things we can do. We can kill Lord Woodborne individually, or we can let him live and take the letters from him and give them to various characters in the factions. That's a possibility we can do. Um, or we can do a mixture of both. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just going to kill Woodborne because it's the most easy thing to do. I think there's only one technical outcome that you can actually do that will cause Lysandus' spirit not to be exercised properly. Because after this quest, which is actually very almost... Ooh! Orcish Buckler! That's really cool just to sell. Um, Orcish is really rare, by the way. I'd like to point out, it's like rarer than Daedric, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but anyways... So yeah, Lord Woodborne can be killed and it'll soothe Lysandus as well. If you want to go ultra fuck you crazy, you can show Wayrest uh, nobility the things and you can get some reputation hits if you really want to. If you couldn't tell by now, Wayrest is basically the worst option in terms of the whole story, right? Like, they're just not good people. <laughs> um... But yeah, there's a few different ways you can handle it. I don't know exact. Oh my god, Addy Claymore. Don't mind if I do. Um, we're also like level 12 or whatever we're at. What are we at? Like level 12? 11. I know what level I am. Um, so yeah, we can handle this quest in a very different way depending on what kind of person you are. Like, if you're going for pacifist, uh, like a linguist build or whatever, I mean, yeah, you can totally do the pacifist route and just book it to the letter and um, never touch Woodborne at all. Um, that's entirely possible. So there is some variation in this game that you can kind of end it with. Like, I don't encourage violence as a person, but this guy's kind of a cunt. I mean, we might as well just go in and blast his ass to the moon. I don't see a problem with that. He basically just tried to overthrow the entire empire systematically by sleeper agenting fucking shitty people through political schemes and defamation and trying to basically blame orcs for shit. Speaking of orcs, um, is that better than the, uh... 8 to 17. Nah, but the minimum damage is pretty cool. I'm just stoked about this. I like this. I'll take Addy because it's just cool. Actually, let's get rid of this dwarven shit. We don't need this anymore. 
We don't need this bullshit. Um, let me save too. Um, but yeah, we don't technically. Oh, this is the. Pretty sure this is the correct room area we need to be in. This is, I think, the room area that has Woodborne in it. So, you're probably thinking, oh, cool, is Lord Woodborne like a super unique boss fight with like old fucking cool boss music and shit and like fucking Daedra are gonna spawn out of his asshole? No. I, I hate to burst your little bubble of excitement, but that's not gonna happen. Lord Woodborne is a generic NPC. Um, he looks exactly like the characters we're fighting right now, minus that orc, of course. Um, he is a very, very standard looking enemy. Um, however, the room he's in is what you can tell. Okay, I think it, he's in this room, am I right? He's in one of these rooms. And the moment we hit him is the moment you basically know who he is, if you're not familiar with uh, the game. So, I'm not sure if Lord Woodborne is scaled to the player. I would assume he is, because he's a humanoid NPC, but... You know, I've been wrong in the past, I'm sure. I know, hard to believe I'm actually wrong every now and then. But it's, it's true, I think he, uh... I think he should be leveled to your character, if I had to guess. I'm just spitballing ideas here. Hello, Mr. Orc Warlord. How are you doing? Um, holy shit, that guy's fuck fucking me up good. Wow. Um, so, yeah, Woodborne is a little bit of an anticlimactic boss fight, especially because you never actually see him or, like, well, I guess... He's a show-don't-tell kind of villain, you know. He's implied to have been doing shit in the background the whole game. And hello, Mr. Centaur. Um, he's supposed to be this kind of... Oh, well, Elven? Hell yeah, man. We're fucking getting powered the fuck up here. Um, Lysandus' quest is pretty short. That's why I'm shoving this in there, by the way. Um, so yeah, like, in terms of characters, I don't think he's a well-established villain, but in terms of the reality of it, I mean, he's been name-dropped, like, what, one time, I think, by, like, Brissy? No. I think he was mentioned in the Emperor's letter, am I correct? Like, they say he's going to lose the Staff of Tiber Septim. Um, which we don't know the entire lineage of yet. But, uh... I'll wear those. Why not? Fashion up, baby. Um... So yeah, technically... We've heard of Woodborne, and... If I'm not mistaken... Yeah, this is the correct way, because I know this branches uh, from memory from, like, last week. Um, he's... There we go. I lost that last time. I don't know how that happened. That's weird. I must have unequipped it on accident. But, um, yeah, we've heard of Woodborne, but we've never actually seen him. It's implied, I think, that his daughter is Elisana, the chick that killed, um, what's his name? Let me double check, because I feel like this is correct. Hmm. I'm feeling it. I feel like I'm in the right room, because I remember there being a giant and being confused last time, too. Um, so, it's implied, I think, that she's related to him, or something of that nature, so don't quote me on that, but it's it's not very well... There he is. You! You're that dark elf Shriaki. You have been a thorn in my side for a long time now. A wiser Dark Elf would have left sleeping kings lie, especially when I have gone to such great lengths to kill them. Yes, Shriraki, I killed Mufasa, and now it will be a pleasure to slay you on guard. Um... Yeah, this is the exciting epic confrontation between us and Lord Woodborne, who sometimes can be a woman. I am done in. It is up to... to Gothrid now. May you... 
Run, hell, Shriaki. I most certainly shall. Lord Woodborne is dead. There. Was that... Was that what you were expecting? Because <laughs> that's about as exciting as it gets. So yeah, we basically just soothed Lysandus' soul. Um, not exactly the most incredible thing ever, I'm sure. But yeah, sometimes he can also spawn in as a, a female character placeholder, like these guys right here. So... Don't be shocked if all of a sudden you hit a woman and then she turns into Lord Woodborne. That can happen. Um, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and get the hell out of here. Teleprot. And we'll do our wagon setup. And, yeah. I need that iron fucking flail, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it. Um... God, I can never do this exactly how I want. But yeah, that's basically the uh, the gist, right? We have essentially soothed Lysandus' soul. I believe if we look at our log, yeah, we've actually done the quest that we were sent to do. And done all the major things we were meant to do. You haven't failed, old man. You've done exactly as you were meant to do. <laughs> now I think you shall have your reward. And then I get killed by Tentai... Tentai Henticles, yeah. Anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it. The next video will be wrapping up and preparing for the final shit in the game. So I'm gonna go to bed and all that shit, and I'll see you in the next one. I want to climb these. I'm gonna climb this. Let's climb. I want it. I want of it. Brother. Yeah! Oh, I want on the top. I want to be on the fucking top. I'm not going to play bottom bitch anymore. Alright. Yeah. Was it worth it? Uh, probably not. <laughs>